Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our unboxing and first impressions look at the Smartisan Nut Pro 2. This is the latest smartphone from Smartisan, a company from Beijing. And so they have a lot of unique designs going on both with the software and with the hardware. It looks a lot more premium than many other Chinese smartphones on the market. So this is certainly a company that you can compare to the likes of, let's say, Le Eco or Le TV or Xiaomi, but on a smaller scale, uh, in contrast to other manufacturers like Elephone, Bluebo, Duji, which are uh, much smaller and much less credible. Interestingly, the Nut Pro 2 also offers pretty good value as a Snapdragon 660 powered smartphone. So it has a 2.2 gigahertz octa-core chipset that actually performs very well. Not quite a true flagship that may have in Snapdragon 845 for instance, but it'll still deliver silky smooth performance even in gaming and it will edge out any MediaTek chipset on the market, so pretty impressive benchmarks. Uh, other Snapdragon 660 phones including the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 and the Elephone U slash U Pro. Um, again, Elephone is a company that's in my perspective, isn't quite as established as Smartisan, both in terms of company size and reputation. So it's interesting that Smartisan's Nut Pro 2, which retails for around $370 to $380, sometimes it goes on sale for even lower, is the cheapest out of the three, uh, despite having very similar hardware and, in my perspective, a more interesting design and UI and a real dual camera setup, uh, as you would expect from a company like Smartisan. So here's a box, very interesting. The phone is just right on top. And down below, we have what looks like the user manual that's printed in Chinese. Since this company is still mainly based in China, they don't really export their phones directly, which is why it's uh, exclusive through distributors like Gearbest. So here is a SIM card ejector, and we also have a user manual, very interesting in how it's documented. Uh, reminds me a lot of Xiaomi slash Apple, what seems like the charging cable, and it's probably using USB Type-C, as you can see there. And finally, we have just the quick charger. Back to the phone, it has a very premium construction. Corning Gorilla Glass both on the front and on the back, and you have these delicate chamfered aluminum edges that gives the phone a really nice heft in the hands. Smartisan's design philosophy is minimalism. And we can see that even on the back, where the dual cameras are disguised. Basically, the secondary lens is so small, it seems like it's just an LED flash or some type of sensor for the primary one. It's very aesthetically pleasing. The same thing goes with the fingerprint scanner. It seems like it's just a decoration with the company's logo, but it actually is a very functional fingerprint reader. So all of these things are very nicely thought out ahead of time. On the side here, we have access to volume rockers. This looks like a power key. On the bottom, there's a USB Type-C speaker microphone, and there's also a button on the side that's probably multifunction. What you'll notice is that the phone doesn't have a headphone port. However, considering Smartisan's oath to minimalism, it makes a little bit of sense. Still, I really would have preferred to see a standard 3.5mm jack, but there is an accessory that I missed previously. It's an adapter that transforms Type-C to 3.5 that you can use, or you can opt for Bluetooth, of course. So this is what the startup screen is like. Very interesting uh, UI just immediately on first impressions, and also very small bezel. After entering Wi-Fi information, we can choose a launcher uh, in terms of 9 grid or 20 grid. So how the icons are displayed, we're going to choose this one by default. The transparent one, it's setting the time and date, and let's just say next. GPS location, let's leave that on. The overall screen seems to be very sensitive. It's an IPS panel. It's not AMOLED, but it does have very wide viewing angles. And now we're setting up the fingerprint using this large sensor on the back. Uh, very interesting. There's haptic feedback, so the phone vibrates whenever I'm tapping on it. And uh, again, a very interesting UI experience. Let's tap on next. There's also face unlock. If you look really closely, there's actually a small indent in the glass. That's where the earpiece sits. It's almost completely invisible to the naked eye. So again, it just shows how much thought uh, Smartisan went into disguising all of these regular ports. So a lot of engineering uh, and work went into this. I'm just gonna skip the face unlock for now and we can start using our phone. As a quick comparison, here is the aforementioned Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus. Both of these phones have the same six inch uh, full HD plus displays, but you can really tell how the footprint of the Xiaomi is considerably larger uh, just because the bezels both on the sides as well as on the tops uh, are, are larger than the Smartisan. Fingerprint scanner seems to be really quick just just tapping on it and it instantly pops onto life as fast as Xiaomi and Apple's scanners. And the side key, if I tap on it once, brings up this little shortcut that uh, may allow us to access some additional features. We'll dive in deeper in the full review and get back to you guys on that. 
Drag down shade seems to be pretty typical. There's on-screen controls for home, back, and opening up multitasking, which has a very interesting display because it also shows your notifications and the quick shortcuts for Wi-Fi and other connectivity options right on top. But what you don't have are widgets, since uh, again, some artists are going for this really streamlined aesthetic. Uh, so of course there's a lot of other features in the Smartisan OS that we have to dive in much deeper to figure out. So that's our unboxing and first impressions look at the Smartisan Nut Pro 2. This is a beautifully crafted phone that's backed up with pretty powerful hardware and a really unique software. It's often going to make you stand out from the crowd. If you consider the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 as more of a flagship level phone for Xiaomi, then this is similar. It's uh, definitely more of a upper, mid-end slash flagship level phone, um, and so it's not quite as budget or but it still has, again, pretty good value for the money if you, again, compare it to the competition. For now, this has just been our unboxing of the very peculiar Smartisan Nut Pro 2.